I'm Dick Simon, and I just wanted to give an update on what's going on with the adult program. I know many of you have uh, children that are being seen in the pediatric program, and that uh, I just want to make sure that you, are, that you can see that we, in fact, are doing quite well here and that we are ready for your children when the time comes. Um, hopefully, um, the slides you can see now. Um, because to try to get us back on time, I'm going to go a little bit quickly, but I just wanted to say the state of the adult program is really strong now. We've had increasing number of patients. We're up to 341. That's over 100 more than 10 years ago. And we're continuing to grow a number of programs. We're participating in research activities. And also we have a very active patient advisory group. I do want to talk about just very briefly, but Samia has really reviewed this. But on the adult side, we too pivoted very quickly to going almost entirely to virtual visits. And we were able to keep up uh, the, the quality of our patient care by being able to have access of most of our patients to home spirometers. And we instituted a process where you could mail in cultures so we didn't lose out on that entirely. Um, we were able to maintain our team almost intact um, our physical therapist, uh, Kristen Keith, was furloughed, but thank goodness she's back with us. A lot of people benefit from her and has really maintained our program success. I'm not going to go through all the data that we have, um, but as opposed to Samia, who didn't get this year's in time, I did. I was able to... Um, to download ours. And, and this is the only slide I'm going to show you because it's a very nice summary slide. And this is from this year's data as opposed to what Sam has showed from 2019. But on the x-axis here is body mass index and you want to be high. This is a measurement of whether your weight is appropriate to your height. And FEV1 you're all familiar with. It's a measurement of the status of your lung disease. And so all the pink dots here are data from programs across the country. Every program is a different single pink dot here from 2010. And our adult program was just a little bit above the median of body mass index and a little bit above FEV1. Over the last decade, you can see all the pink dots here. Well, it looks like almost everyone improved here in, in, in the nation. They all shifted to the right and up. But this is our current one showing us that we are one of the three top groups with maintaining good body mass index. And we are above the median, but would like to be higher with our lung disease there. Part of the reason for us is a really good stability of our team. And I'm not going to go through these because of time, but I am just pointing this out to let you know that despite all the disruptions that occurred and continue to occur with the COVID-19 pandemic, we were able to maintain things. And, we, and, and those of you who are familiar with our program, you would recognize virtually all of these names here. We did bring Natalie Zedro into one of the programs coordinator um, because Ronnie Downer recognizing that she really loved Love direct patient care. And so she went back to being full-time nursing. She's the voice very frequently on the phone when people call in. And our physician group here also shows considerable stability, where these are long-term physicians here, our transplant uh, physician, uh, Ramel Sagana. We've got two diabetologists that are very active. GI we have covered. And ENT, there's several of them. I just picked out Dr. Zakarik's name here as well. But there have been changes in the program, and with, some of you may know that I'm going to be retiring at the end of June. Um, I've been with the program for 40 years, and it's time, and we have great younger people taking over. The medical directorship of the CF program is going to be shifted to, um, it's going to be shared by Dr. Gia and Dr. Sissom. They are both exceedingly well qualified for this. Dr. Gia, after growing up in Michigan, got her medical degree at Washington University in St. Lewis, this is a very high quality institution. A lot of people want to go there. Relatively few can. And then she went to do her internal medicine residency at Cleveland Clinic. As many of you may know, Cleveland Clinic is one of the premier institutions that really emphasizes patient care. And Dr. Gia brings that whole experience to help us streamline our work. She's been with us at University of Michigan for the last seven years. 
Tom Sisson has done his medical training here at the University of Michigan. He's been on our faculty for 23 years and the vast majority of them. He has been the um, associate medical director. He sees a large number of people with CF. So even though I am disappearing and riding off into the sunset, we've got really good people left behind. We do have additions to the program. Just, um, I just wanted to introduce briefly Dr. Sarah Brown. Sarah Brown will be joining us. Um, she got her medical degree here at the University of Michigan and then did her internal medicine residency at Brigham and Women's Hospital. That's in the Harvard system, very competitive, which just gives you an idea of the caliber of the physician that she is. We were very lucky. She came back and did her fellowship here and she's just finishing up and she's gonna be joining us. She's been working with CF for the last year and is really really well positioned to do it there. We will be needing to get a new inpatient social worker because Brian Nickerson is leaving for a really excellent job in Chicago. And our respiratory therapist, Armando Carilli, is going to be pivoting to other duties and we are going to replace him. As far as post-COVID-19, uh, what's going to happen? Well, we pivoted almost entirely to video visits and we're gonna keep a mixture of them. No one is really sure what the proportion is gonna be, but it's likely gonna be somewhere about to a quarter to a third of patient uh, visits will be video. It may be higher than that, but we really need to get to back to in-person visits because we are missing important information that we want to be able to get to provide quality of care. Also of note is there's been a great drop in hospitalizations over the last year and a half. And the reason mainly is because of Trikafta, that the number of people getting sick is down to about a quarter of our hospitalizations and even less than that. And also during the pandemic, when everyone was protecting themselves from COVID, they were also protecting themselves um, from influenza and other respiratory diseases there. So in summary, um, I think the future of the adult CF program at University of Michigan is very bright. And although I am sad on a number of, uh, from a number of points of view to be leaving the program, I really know that it's functioning very well and it will continue to only get better under the leadership and with the team all working there. And so as my parting comment, I really wanna thank all the CF patients, families, and their friends who've been such an important part of my career. I couldn't have asked for a better situation, particularly starting out in the dark ages of CF where the treatments were largely ineffective and most children having severe disease still in childhood to now with the Trikafta era and all this new lease on life. 